let's talk about space propulsion. That's what I want to talk about. This is so cool. I, I love space. I don't know if you know this about me. A lot of my stuff, my show is about the future, is about human society and moving forward and, and fixing problems, not being angry at problems you can't do anything about. God, the guys, people are ridiculous. Anyway, okay. So first article I got here is about, um, let me just pop it up. Report recommends NASA accelerate space nuclear propulsion development. All right. NASA needs to pursue aggressive development of space nuclear propulsion technologies if the agency wants to use them for human missions to Mars in the next two decades. A report by a National Academ uh, Academies Committee concluded. A February 12th study by the National Academies, sponsored by NASA, said both nuclear th thermal propulsion and nuclear electric propulsion approaches must overcome significant hurdles for their use in the notion of uh, in the not uh, excuse me, notional 2039 human mission to Mars. 2039. That's close. That's under 20 years. They're trying to put humans on Mars. Okay. I don't want to get sidetracked. Uh, s such systems could reduce the travel time of expeditions to Mars. Space nuclear propulsion technology shows great potential to facilitate the human exploration of Mars, said Bobby Braun, director of planetary science at the Jet Laboratory, uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory and co-chair of the committee that wrote the report in a statement. However, significant acceleration in the pace of technology uh, maturation is required if NASA and its partners are to com complete this mission within the stated timeline. Of the two technologies, the report was more optimistic about NTP, where the nuclear reactor heats up a fuel such as liquid hydrogen to generate thrust. An aggressive program could develop an NTP system capable of ex ex executing the baseline mission in 2039, the report concluded. That technology, though, faces several challenges beyond the nuclear reactor itself. They include being able to heat up the propellant to the required temperature of 20. 700 kelvins and bringing the system up to operation or operating temperature within one minute other challenges include a lack of ground-based testing facilities for ntp systems and difficulties storing liquid hydrogen for the duration of the mission nep where a nuclear reactor generates power for electric thrusters needs to scale up its power and thermal managing systems, management systems to level far beyond what's been demonstrated to date in order to work with megawatt class reactors. The report, though, noted that there has been little progress on relevant technologies since 2005, and the work that has been done has been limited to lower power systems. As a result of low and intermittent investment over the past several decades, it is unclear if even an aggressive program would be able to develop an NEP system capable of executing a baseline mission in 2039, the report concluded. If nonetheless recommended NASA invigorate technology development for NEP systems, which we're going to get into in a little bit. NASA has been struggling to balance competing priorities for nuclear power and propulsion development. In addition to NTP and NEP, the agency has also been working on surface fission power systems, such as kilopower, that, that would provide power on the surface of the moon or Mars. The agency has tried to advance work on kilopower because the technology has nearer-term applications for the Artemis Lunar Exploration Program, which doesn't need nuclear propulsion. Congressional advocates of NTP, though, have inserted report language of into appropriations bills directing NASA to spend money on that effort. That includes the fiscal year of 2021 appropriations bill enacted in December, which instructed NASA to spend $110 million of its $1.1 billion in space technologies funded by NTP development, of which $80 million would go to uh, would go the design of test articles that would will enable a flight demonstration. NASA has not announced plans yet for a flight demonstration on the NTP system, but they actually have claimed that they are looking for private companies to purchase systems from, ranging from a new space station, uh, a, 
a base on uh, the moon, getting to and from moon. They have a, a, the, a few different companies that they're that are competing to try to be that shuttle that's going to be landing and taking off. Um, I I've got my money on SpaceX just because uh, I I just I'm a geek for SpaceX. Um, anyway, let's see where was I? Uh, at the January 27th meeting of the NASA Advisory Council Technolo Technology Committee, members noted that they had previously advised NASA to make surface fission power a higher priority than NTP because of its applications for Artemis, which makes sense because Artemis is, is going to be used significantly sooner than when they go to Mars. Absolutely, we totally agree. Jim Reuter, NASA Associate Administrator for, for Space Technology, uh, responded. The direction from Congress was nuclear thermal propulsion. He said NASA was moving ahead with a, a solicit, solicitation of NTP technology development because of the funding delaying one for surface nuclear power until later in the fiscal year. Nuclear, nuclear thermal propulsion has high interest from a number of standpoints, said NASA and DOD. He added, it is a very good technology. The Trump administration, in its final weeks, also elevated surface nuclear power over NTP and NEP. Space Policy Directive 6, released December 16th, established a strategy for developing space nuclear technologies, including both power and propulsion. It prioritized surface nuclear power over nuclear propulsion because the latter is not needed for the Artemis program. Those things are important for going to Mars, a senior administration official said of nuclear propulsion at the time of the strategy's release. But first, we're going, uh, we're doing the moon and leveraging terrestrial capabilities and technologies to put that foothold on the moon. It is not clear what relevance that strategy has under the Biden administration, which has taken few measures yet regarding space policy. Now, Biden did say that he's keeping the Space Force and nothing's going to change there. So we'll see. But I want to focus a little bit more on the NEP, the electric, the electric propulsion systems. Now, this is a little different. Okay, this is, though they're doing more of a traditional sense. This is kind of a little more along the lines of what I've been hoping for. Now, I, I've had conversations about gravity. Um, not well, actually, um, Andreas was on the show and for a little bit, and we, him, and Ian and I, uh, we were around the campfire and we were talking about what gravity is, because we don't really know what gravity is, and I believe it's magnetism. It's extreme magnetism, like the weight of a planet. Earth is, I mean. This is not proven. This is just what I've, what I would, you know, what I think it could be, you know, as an explanation of what gravity is. It is magnetism. Magnets make the world go round. Everything is about uh, magnets, you know, magnetic energy. We have a, a magnetic shield, a magnetosphere that's keeping us protected from, from the sun's rays and helping keeping our atmosphere in. And, you know, the, the poles, you know, the earth itself is a Taurus. It's got, you know, the, the North Pole and the South Pole. And they're, you know, there's a reason why, a, you know, a compass has a little magnet on it and it faces, faces North. Anyway, now that I kind of just said that a little bit, listen to this article. New rocket thrust, thruster concept exploits the mechanic uh, mechanism behind solar flares. Interesting. A new type of rocket thruster that could take humankind to Mars and beyond has been proposed by the physicists at the U.S. Department of Energy, uh, Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, the PPPL. The device would apply magnetic fields to cause particles of plasma, electrically charged gas, also known as the fourth state of matter, to shoot out the back of a rocket and, because of the cons conservation of momentum, propel the craft forward. Current space-proven plasma thrusters use electric fields to propel the particles. It's kind of similar to the M-Drive, which, man, I don't really recall it too too much, but uh, anyway, I'm going to keep, keep it moving. The new concept would accelerate the particles using magnetic reconnection, a process found throughout the universe, including the surface of the sun, in which magnetic field lines converge and suddenly separate, and then join together again, producing lots of energy. 
Reconnection also occurs inside a donut-shaped fusion devices known as uh, takam takamaks. I actually have a... here it is. So here is a, a, a picture of a takamak. And then there, a takamak is a machine that confines a plasma using magnetic fields in a donut shape that scientists call a torus, which are found everywhere. That is a whole nother subject we can talk about. Fusion energy scientists believe that takamaks are the leading plasma confinement concept for the future fusion plant power plants. In a takamak, magnetic field coils confine plasma particles to allow the plasma to achieve the conditions necessary for fusion. One set of magnetic coils generates an intense toroidal field directed the long way around the torus. A central solenoid, a magnetic that carries an electric current, creates a second magnetic field directed along the a poloidal direction, the short way around the torus. The two fields components result in a twisted magnetic field that confines the particles in the plasma. A third set of field coils generates an outer poloidal field that shapes and positions the plasma. All right, so that's that's a lot to take in. All right, but so that but that's the secret behind this engine that they're proposing. And here's a quote from him: "I've been cooking this concept for a while." said the PPPL principal research physicist Fatima uh, Ebrahimi, the concept's inventor and author of, of a paper detailing the idea in the journal, journal of Plasma Physics. I had the idea in 2017 while sitting on a deck and thinking about the similarities between a car's exhaust and high-velocity exhaust particles created by PPPL's National Spherical Torus Experiment, the NSTX the forerunner of the laboratory's present flagship fusion facility. During its operation, this takamak produced, produces magnetic bubbles called plasmoids that move at around 20 kilometers per second, which seems to me like a lot of thrust, or seems to me a lot like thrust. Fusion, the power that drives the sun and stars, combines light elements in the form of plasma the hot charged state of mass, uh, matter composed of free electrons and atomic nuclei that represents 99% of the visible universe to generate massive amounts of energy. Scientists are seeking to replicate fusion on Earth for a virtually inexhaustible supply of power to generate electricity. Current plasma thrusters that use electric fields to propel the part particles can only produce low specific impulse or speed. And a computer simulated uh, simulations performed on PPPL computers and the National Energy Research Scientific Computing Center, a DOE office of science user facility at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory in Berkeley, California, whew, showed that the new plasma thruster concept can generate exhaust with velocities of hundreds of kilometers per second, 10 times faster than those of other thrusters. All right, so you see, they're they're actually showing that this could theoretically work. They could produce essentially a fusion engine using electromagnetic energy. Very very exciting stuff. That faster velocity at the beginning of a spacecraft's journey could bring the outer planets within reach of astronauts. Uh, Ibrahimi says, long distance travel takes months or years because the specific impulse of a chemical rocket engines is very low, so the craft takes a while to get up to speed. But if we can make thrusters based on magnetic reconnection, then we can conceivably com complete long distance missions in a shorter period of time. Of course, the only issue is the human body could may not be able to handle that kind of uh, stress. In, in the movie The Expanse, actually, there's an episode about when they create this th this new engine that um, kind of like what's going on here. And in that episode, the guy is going so fast, he can't even like slow down. But the body itself, he was like, like bleeding from the eyes. And like, I, I think he passed out for a little bit until hit the, you know, he reached speed. So then it wasn't an acceleration. He was just at at such an incredible speed but he woke up and re realized he was still going so fast he couldn't like slow himself down he was so but in the in the in the show they create some sort of a gel that goes into your body i mean you still get thrown back but you your the body can actually handle it now obviously that's sci-fi the expanse still a great show if you haven't seen it you should check it out 
Um, but man, this is this is exciting stuff. This this is a really long article. It, it continues on for a while, but I feel like the 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 juice of this um, t potential future has been set. They, I mean, the outer planets being able to get to Mars like that. It takes what seven months right now. Excuse me, to get to Mars, seven months. That's that's a long time. If we can get there in a month, that's crazy different. We can we can start supplying Mars significantly faster. Moon we wouldn't really need to because it's it's right there. I mean it's still pretty far out there, but uh, you know we still have to leave the atmosphere and get over there. But imagine if we could go to you know Ceres or you know man any of the other moons that potentially have life. You know we could we can get to these places and check them out. It, we can go. Uh, mine that asteroid that we just found that's worth like 10 quad 10,000 quadrillion dollars that's more than the entire planet's wealth on that one asteroid but then it opens up to the jobs of actually mining our solar system going to the asteroid belt and snagging asteroids and mining them and bringing them back to the potential space shipyards that are going to be a thing you know it's going to be a thing eventually we're clearly moving to a, a place of of being in space. Space will become a normal thing soon, sooner than later. Like I'm going to see it in my lifetime. I'm in my 30s. You know, I think in 30 years, I would love to be around still in 30 years. Uh, I um, I think I'm going to see it. 2039? They want to have boots on the ground on Mars? That's huge. That's huge. We, now we're going to, in two days, we're landing a, a new nuclear-powered bot, basically, to, to roam around searching for signs of life right near a crater that used to be an ancient lake bed. It's perfectly primed to check it out. It's going to be very exciting. So, And I'm definitely going to do a, a, you know, an episode about it uh, on, uh, what was today, Tuesday? So Thursday. Yeah, so I'm very excited about it. It's going to be really cool. Very excited about that.